What does it mean to make a practical car? If you're famous British supercar manufacturer McLaren, it means this, the 2017 570 GT. It's the slightly softer version of the 570S that so impressed us last year that I called it my car of 2016. Now, practicality speaking, it's not your average minivan, I know. Two seats inside, but you do get an extra 7.8 cubic feet of storage, thanks to a very clever trunk design at the back. So as well as the front trunk, you also get this rear compartment that you can open up using the key. And it's a glass panel with carbon fiber around the edge just to keep things light. It's heated so that if it's a snowy day, you can clear that off. And inside there's a leather lined dual layer storage place where you can put some soft bags. And if you really want to go the whole hog, McLaren will happily sell you some matching luggage to go with the car. Now don't confuse practical for slow. You still get McLaren's 3.8 litre V8 twin turbocharged engine, and that's good for 562 horsepower. Top speed is 204 miles an hour, just as you get in the 570S. So this is not a slow car, even though you can fit more stuff in it. 0 to 62 does suffer a tiny amount. You're looking at 3.4 seconds to get there, which is about 0.2 seconds slower than in the 570S. But honestly, in everyday use, you're really not going to notice the differences. Now they've softened the front suspension by about 15% and the rear by about 10% and while those numbers might not sound like much, they do make a difference on the sort of rutted roads you get here in California. Now the 7-speed semi-automatic transmission in this car is still pretty much sublime. It's fast acting whether you leave it in automatic mode or if you use the paddle shifters yourself. And McLaren's interesting paddle setup where you can push forward and backward on both paddles uh, really does make it easier in the tighter corners. You get three drive modes in McLaren's active driving system too. Uh, there's the regular normal mode, uh, sport mode and track mode where basically most of the electronics are turned off and you can go even further than that and shut down all of the electric nannying, though it's really only recommended if you have a track to take advantage of. Now while the 570S comes as standard with carbon ceramic brakes, the 570 GT gets steel brakes as standard, that you can upgrade if you prefer. Really though, I don't think you need to. Even when pushing the 570 GT hard, I haven't noticed any issues with stopping power. Here inside the cabin, it's a much lighter area place to be than in the 570S, and that's all down to the full glass panoramic sunroof. Now that doesn't open, and also notably, it doesn't come with any kind of sunshade. There's no electrochromatic glass here, which some supercars use. And that means that it can get quite hot in the summer, and you might be cranking up the air conditioning down to low and into its max setting just to keep you cool. Now a fair number of the comfort features that McLaren keeps as options on the 570S come as standard on this, the 570 GT. And that includes some really, really important things like the front nose lift, which makes a big difference if you've ever tried to nose a very low car in and out of a parking lot. You really do not want the underside of this car to start getting crunched up. One of the things that really sets McLaren apart from some of its other supercar competitors is just how beautiful the cabin fit and finish is. McLaren doesn't have a parent company making Golfs or Focuses or any other kind of mainstream car and so it has to do everything itself and the result is not only the beautiful leather equipped cabin, we're leather wrapping up over the top of me here in the GT, but also down to the switch gear which is all beautifully machined, feels great, looks great. Now trying to do everything in-house does mean that sometimes not everything goes right. And if there's one area of the McLaren's cabin that I'm not 100% convinced by, it's the infotainment system. They call it Iris, it's based on Android and it's all a homegrown affair. And while it looks great with some Star Trek style interface elements, it's not actually the easiest thing to use, particularly on the move. Setting a navigation destination or trying to cancel a navigation destination can be pretty much impossible while you're uh, driving along on the freeway. Now one thing you don't have to worry about is exclusivity. You're not going to see very many of these cars out on the road. That's because McLaren, in, even in supercar terms, is pretty much a boutique manufacturer. It means that if you've gotten a bit fed up of seeing other people driving exactly the same Porsche that you have, pick up a McLaren 570 GT and you're very unlikely to run into another owner in the parking lot at Whole Foods.